Hello and welcome back to another Passive Life video. This is a quick news update covering all the recent events that have happened over the past few weeks and taking a closer look at the webinar from Aptera yesterday. So a quick apology from me first for the lack of content. I've been extremely busy trying to redesign my office and studio space, building a new computer, and I was away for quite a while in Italy on business. Speaking of Italy, if you do want to see the Aptera, a bit of news that we did get from this presentation from Aptera yesterday is that Aptera will be at the Motor Valley Fest 2023 from the 11th to the 14th of May, which is in Modena, Italy. So if you are in the area, this is probably your last chance to see the Aptera Gamma in real life before it gets shipped back to the US. As far as I'm aware, this event is completely free, but you do have to book for certain events. I unfortunately will not be able to make it. This was much too short notice for me, but fortunately I have already seen and driven in the Aptera Gamma. So at least I don't feel like I'm missing out that much. So onto the presentation from Aptera. So this webinar presentation was primarily about the production tooling progress that they made. This isn't the tooling for another test vehicle. This is the actual real tooling for the production Apteras, the ones that we will be purchasing and driving around one day. So every piece that we see here is now just a final piece of the puzzle that they're putting together before they can start production. And they are already quite far. Very sensibly, Aptera has decided to go with the largest lead time objects first, which is why we saw several months ago the images of the large side panels, which apparently started production over a year ago, because these dies take a very long time to machine. We also saw some of the blocks that are waiting to be produced. So Aptera seems to have purchased all of the raw materials they need for these dies, but not all of them have been machined yet. There are a few still waiting to start the machining process. But by starting with the biggest ones first, they're optimizing the lead time so that hopefully with the accelerator program, there isn't that much left to do by the time they get enough funding to start production. This tooling is a very expensive and time consuming part of the initial setup. But once it's done, each of these dies should be able to produce around 100,000 parts before it's retired. Another piece of good news is that they seem to now have perfected the solar panel production process. It was very good before, but they seem to have optimized it further to make it more manufacturable with better scratch resistance. And importantly, they seem to have solved the problem of some of the panels falling small air bubbles, which is great news. Some more funding is now coming through from the CEC grant, which is also great news, and that is being used to outfit their production facility. And we are just under halfway with the accelerator program, which has raised 14.26 million at time of recording, which is obviously helping a lot with the entire production process, allowing them to get these tools made very quickly. But it has slowed down noticeably since the beginning. And this seems to be at least partly related to media coverage, as we have seen slight jumps in new investors when some of the bigger channels and media outlets have covered Aptera. But hopefully this accelerator program will keep ticking away in the background at a steady pace, my guess is that it'll finish shortly before the end of the year and will have raised around 25 million. Another interesting point for the tech heads was the silicon carbide inverter that they are thinking of scrapping and replacing with basically standard inverters. And this is primarily because of cost. Now we know there's going to be a price jump in the Aptera. We don't know how much, but a silicon carbide inverter apparently costs 10 times more than a standard inverter and is only 1 to 2% more efficient. Now, when we're talking about the Aptera, which is the most efficient vehicle ever made, yes, it doesn't make that much technical difference overall because the Aptera is so efficient, but it is a bit of a shame that we might have to make this compromise, but I can accept it from a cost point of view if we can try and keep the cost increase down to a reasonable level. Now, Chris Anthony did at one point hint that there might be a 30% increase in the cost of the Aptera. I really hope it's not that high, but we are still based on prices from 2019. So we have several years of inflation and one very large year of inflation. So I think quite likely the cost increase is going to be around 20%. Even with a normal rate of inflation, we will probably be talking about at least a 15% increase in the cost of the Aptera, but I hope it's not the 30% that Chris Anthony is hinting at because that might push out a lot of people, not because they don't want to buy an Aptera, but because they simply can't afford it anymore. Aptera also announced that they have the ATVM loan application submitted, which is excellent news. As many of you already know, the ATVM loan is a bit of a double-sided sword. It's the same loan that saved Tesla before it went bankrupt. It's the same loan that's supposed to prioritize high efficiency vehicles. And it is the same loan that killed Aptera the first time around by dismissing it because it only had three wheels. And this is a very important loan at a very important time for Aptera. So fingers crossed that they get all the money that they're asking for and Aptera can have a flying start into production. We also got to see the first real simulated images of the off-road kit for the Aptera, which is basically the same Aptera but with a much higher ground clearance. The front and rear pans have been taken up a notch and then it's hard to tell from this image if the belly pan is higher as well. I suspect it might be a little bit higher. That will have an impact upon efficiency, of course, but it is very necessary if you are intending to take the vehicle off-road. 
but he looks cool. I was very impressed with the images. On the front wheel pans, there seems to be a little lip sticking out. I think that's probably to do with the increased degradation they're expecting from an off-road vehicle at the front of the wheel pan, so it's a bit of extra protection. Could be wrong. It might be something more practical, like a quick release mechanism for the foam there, so you can replace it more easily. But all in all, it was good to see this, and we know that the progress is being made on all other aspects of the Aptera, not just the launch edition vehicle. Finally, in other news, the gigantic battery manufacturer Cattle, CATL, has announced its 500 watt hour per kilogram battery, which is almost twice as energy dense as the batteries in normal EVs. Why is this relevant to Aptera? Well, this is a huge leap in battery technology, and it won't be long before other manufacturers of batteries also reach this kind of level of energy density. This is great news for Aptera, not for the launch edition vehicles, but for future vehicles that may be able to integrate this technology. It would make the Aptera even more efficient by reducing the weight to almost half of what it already is, or allowing a larger battery to go even further. Who knows, maybe one Day we even see a 2000 mile special edition Aptera vehicle with silicon carbide inverters. Why not? Okay, that's it for this news update. Do let me know what you think down below about what you think the price increase will be for Aptera. Do you think it's going to be 30%? Is it going to be more? On a final note, if you are looking for a new bank to help support this channel, I am now shilling for Wise, which is actually my personal bank that I've been using for the past five years. It is not the only bank account that I have, but it is genuinely the favorite bank that I have ever had. It is so quick so easy to use. It is especially good if you need to change money between different currencies quite often like I do, and WISE is by far the cheapest and quickest way I have found to do this so far. If you use the link below, they will give you a fee-free transfer of up to 500 euros when you sign up. The bank account itself is free, and it lets you open up sub-accounts in any currency you like. I have been very happy with them so far, and most of my family and friends also use them. So do check them out, maybe they can save you some money in the near future. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And remember, as always, if you want to reserve an Aptera, please use the code down below. That will save you $30 off the $100 reservation fee, which is totally refundable. That's it, guys. I will see you in the next video.